If you do not replace your doorbell, it could cost you tens of thousands of dollars when you go to sell. Hey, it's me, Katie. Today, I want to talk about the common mistakes that people make when they go to sell their home. Number one, I talk about this all of the time. If you've watched my videos, you know what I'm going to say. You have to make sure that you're pricing your house correctly. If you are not pricing your home correctly, you are not going to get people coming to look at the house. I talk about this all of the time. If your home is priced too high, if it's out of range, buyers aren't going to look at that house. And buyers have access to so much information. I call them amateur professionals. And these are buyers who actually understand exactly what is going on with the market. They know your neighbor's home. They know the home that sold down the street. They know the little tiny differences between your home and the home that sold next door. That's because they have access to so much data. So while you may think overpricing your home is great, these buyers are so super busy, they're not going to come to your house if the house is overpriced because they're going to think obviously that seller is just trying to get and they're not going to take a low offer. So you will eliminate a lot of showings right out of the gate if your house is overpriced. One of the other mistakes that you can make when you go to sell your home is neglecting your repairs. You may think that it might be kind of small. It might be something that's a little detail. It's not a big deal. It's not that much money to fix and the buyers can fix it. And this is what I was talking about with the doorbell. Because when a buyer walks up to the front door and sees a doorbell that is broken, it is a terrible, terrible first impression. In addition, it makes somebody think that if that doorbell is broken and they didn't take the time to fix this and it's a very small repair, what else did the sellers not do in the house? It gives people the feeling that either you're taking care of your house or you're not. So what I want you to do is go and stand in the street and take a look at your house as a buyer would look at it. Walk up to the house, look at it, see what is out of place, what looks broken. I promise you that when you do this, you are going to see little things that are broken that you should be repairing because buyers will see that. You may not have noticed it. You've lived there for years. You've lived with it that way. But I really want you to look and see what are the repairs that a buyer is going to see that makes it seem like you do not take care of your house. A broken doorbell is one. Screens that are broken is a big one. If you have screens that are busted, and I will tell you from having a dog, I had my own screens that are busted. Simple, easy, and inexpensive repair to make. And if you don't fix it, buyers are thinking, wow, they couldn't even fix that. Here's another little one that I want you to do is I want you to go and look in your showers. I want you to pull the shower curtain back and I want you to look and see how much mold do you have in your showers. Yes, mold in the showers along the edge. You live with it. You've seen it every day. It's not a big deal to you. It really is one of those things that give buyers the heebie-jeebies because if you have not cleaned the mold in your shower, what else are you not cleaning? I want to make sure that you do not underestimate the importance and the significance of the little tiny repairs. Another mistake that some people make is that they have too many emotional items in the household. I know you've been told to remove pictures when you move. And yes, you really do want to remove those pictures because what will happen is ultimately somebody will come into the house and they'll say, oh, I know them. They go to church with me or, oh, our kids are friends. Then it brings the house into a personal level with the buyers. So you want to make sure that you are eliminating anything that's personal. In addition, if you have a collection of some sort, a doll collection, a Star Wars collection, anything that's a collection, you really do want to make sure that you get rid of it because what will happen is people will come in and they will be shocked. They'll say, wow, look at this amazing collection. And then they'll spend all their time looking at the collection. And then that's how they refer to your house. They refer to it as, oh, remember all those dolls that they had there? Oh, remember all the spoons that they had? Something like that. So if you have a large collection, you want to make sure that you do neutralize it. Remember, you are trying to show them that this house is their future home. It's going to be very hard for them to envision it if it's all about your own personal effects. All right, poor marketing. This is a huge mistake when sellers do go to sell is choosing an agent that does not do great marketing. When I'm talking about marketing, I'm talking about the quality of the photos, being able to make sure they're advising you on how to stage the house. Does it look good for pictures or does it look good to live in? There are two different things. For example, a rug that you have in your house may look fantastic in your home. It might be black or it might be red or it might have a pattern on it that's very bold. Those types of rugs do not shoot well in pictures and it turns people off. Your goal is to make sure your marketing in your pictures looks like HGTV. Talked about it many times before. They're moving very fast as they're flipping through the houses online. And if you have something that looks a little dated, they will flip right by it. So less is truly more. Make it simple, make it crisp, make it clean, and make them envision that they can live in that house. Additionally, some of the marketing that you want to look at is what is going out online in Instagram or Facebook. How is your agent promoting that to other people? Are they connecting with their sphere, with their data? 
database? Are they trying to pay for advertising? What type of marketing are they doing to push that house out there? I will tell you most of the time, agents are the ones who will bring somebody to your home to purchase it most of the time. Advertising doesn't always really work, but what it does do, let's say you did get a buyer into the house and they loved it and now they want to go back and show their friends. You want to know what kind of information they're showing to their friends online. They're looking at it over and over again. They're looking at the floor plans. They're looking at the pictures. They are really going deep to understand the house at a very, very high level. If you have an agent who is not using any type of online marketing or they're not really technology savvy, you are missing out because that is the way that you continue to build that excitement and that emotional energy for these buyers. When they get back to their own home, they can actually pull it up on the computer and look at it again. So you want to make sure that your marketing is really good when you go to sell your home. And finally, I'm going to talk about something that maybe sellers don't always realize. It's a very, very basic concept. And we do have to point it out. When we point it out, of course, the sellers are going to say, well, duh, yeah, of course. And what that is, is you have to allow showings in your home. I know, duh, that really is very easy. Showings can be really, really difficult, especially if you have a very hot property or the price is very attractive or the market isn't very saturated. If you do not allow the showing request, you can't have the showings. I know that sounds simple it sounds basic, but I get a lot of people who will say, oh, maybe we could have the showing at four today rather than at two. These buyers and these agents are moving so fast that if you do not accept pretty much every single showing in the first two weeks you're on the market, there's a good chance they will not come back. And so accepting the showings, even if it is an inconvenience for you, that's really what you have to do. And a lot of sellers do not understand how available they have to have their house, how available they need to be. It's really the seller that's going to be put out when they list their house. And yes, they have to allow for showings in the house. The other thing, make sure when you have your showings, all of your lights are on in the house. I know it sounds like something simple, but what it does is it gives an energy. It gets a vibrance. It gives light bright to the house. So many times I've walked into a house where the lights aren't on and the buyers get this emotional energy drain. And it just is like, ooh, and it deflates the whole showing. So you want to make sure those lights are on. You want to make sure that things are cleaned up. And you want to make sure that you allow as many showings as possible. Otherwise, those people may not come back. So I hope that this has been helpful to show you five of the common mistakes people are making when they go to sell their home. I have a lot of great videos that I put out about how to sell your home, how to get it updated, how to get it ready to go on the market, how to choose your agent. And make sure you subscribe to my channel because I want to make sure that you're not missing anything that I am putting out. Thanks for watching.